Hi, welcome to another BandLab video. Um, this one I'm looking at the reverb effect. Um, hopefully this will help you understand what reverb is and how to start using it within the BandLab for Education website. Um, this, the ideas that I'll be talking about here can be applied to um, other recording software or situations where you're trying to apply reverb to your sound. So let's first look at what is this reverb. So, reverb is also known as reverberation. So it's to do with your, the sound of how it um, reverberates in its, um, I guess, in its atmosphere or the room and those things. So let's look at a few things. So reverb is created when the sound reflects off a surface. How the sound reflects off the surface can impact on how the sound will decay over time. So it's this decay of how that your sounds um, operate um, that can be considered reverb. So what environmental factors can affect reverb? So there's lots of things that happen outdoors and indoors to do with the spaces, different surfaces around you, whether you're inside and you've got rugs and curtains and those sorts of substances that can absorb sound. Um, it could be the size of the room, the shape of the room, uh, where the walls are, where the furniture is, objects in the room. Um, you could have curtains behind me. I've got a curtain hanging in here that's sort of affecting the sound in here. Um, the volume of the sound source and how it can then impact on how it bounces around the surfaces of the environment, whether indoors or outdoors. The equipment can have a bit of an impact on things. You could be using a live sound system. Live sound systems can have different sorts of impacts on how the sound is going to be affected in that particular environment. Um, the natural sound from voice of instruments can change. Okay. The microphone placement on how it picks up sounds can affect how it's going to be interpreted and then how it's going to be um, used in that space. Effects units can affect the sound of reverb. Um, sound recording processes, when you add sorts of things into the sound effects change, that can affect how the sound is manipulated as well. Human factors have, can have an impact on this. So performers can be affecting the sound. Um, people's level of hearing, how you interpret it in your hearing. Um, I know that one of my ears is very different to the other ear and how it interprets the sounds around in the atmosphere and around me in the different rooms. The number of people in an actual room can affect the sound. Um, the stage space, the audience space can affect how the sound moves around. So what does it look like in a performance space? So here we've got a guitarist on a stage and we've got an audience member. Okay, so you can see that the sound can go up to the roof, down to the audience member, and bounce off different surfaces. Um, down the bottom in the middle, you've got the direct sound, which is often known as the dry sound. And we've also got an example of an echo in here where the sound is going behind the audience member and um, from behind them and hear, and they can then hear the sound get to them um, after the dry sound's gotten to them. So we've got all these different sounds that are going to be bouncing around the room and reverberating. You could also um, take the idea of how the sound end up bounces back at the actual guitarist. Okay, so the sound could be like it's bouncing around the room to the audience member in this diagram. You could redo this as a diagram that bounces back to the actual guitarist on the stage. So the, the reverb is very different for these two people in this particular example here. Okay, so that's roughly reverbs being affected in the space. So what sort of things do people do or why do they combat this stuff? Well, it's basically they want to have control over what their sound is in their recordings. If you're doing lots of recordings, you want to be able to repeat that process really well. And that's why we have um, recording studios or um, home studios where you're setting up your environment so that you have control over how the sound operates. So... After doing a quick little Google search, 
in recording studios, you can see that where the actual person who's doing the mixing, they have certain sound treatment that happens. Uh, we can see examples of, what do we got? We've got hard floors and some, but if you look around the rooms um, and on the walls, you've got all these soundproofing baffles and things um, in these different examples. Where are some others? Over here, this one, you've got lots and lots of soundproofing material against the walls there. Okay, from a performer space, if I just go into this one, here we've got lots of sound treatment, lots of different sorts of reflective surfaces, the roof's been done. Um, you've noticed that a lot of people use these rugs in a lot of video clips these days. Um, that's also part of the treatment. It's not just a cool thing to have a fancy rugs under different performers, but it actually treats the sound to a degree and how the microphones operate in that space. In this example, the performers are sitting on the rugs and they've got different microphones placed around the room um, to collect the ambience of the room as well as the instruments. Okay, so we've sort of got an understanding of what um, reverb is to do with the natural reverberation of how it impacts within its environment. Um, let's move into this uh, the program and have a look there. So, over here, um, we can apply reverb um, effects and things to any of our track types. Um, for these examples, I'm going to use the voice. Um, and in order for me to hear this, I'm going to have to change some settings so that we can monitor what this works like. So it gives me a second. And hopefully, we've got the monitoring sound coming through. Um, now to add reverb, there's quite a few things you can do. You can use the reverb setting here. So let's turn that up a bit. And all you can turn up is the actual percentage of how much reverb is going to be added there. Okay, there's no, not a lot of controls there. You either put a little bit on as you see fit. So let's go into the effects. Now you can go into the presets and there's reverb looked. I'll let you look at those ones. But here, if you just want to add a reverb effect, we've got three within BandLab. We've got the Space Maker. We've got the Spring Reverb. And we've got the Studio Reverb. Okay, so I'll quickly jump over here. So in a lot of um, programs, we can have um, a mix. So that's generally to do with the wet and dry sound. So the wet sound is normally the effect. The dry sound is the natural um, sound of the instrument. Color is sometimes a word used. So it might be to do with the tone setting, whether it's a bright or dark sound, or to do with the EQ. Um, sort of settings and the size this is probably one you'll find in every uh, reverb effect um, how much decay is going to be created and used okay so we'll go back there and look at this studio reverb but we'll turn some of these down a bit. So we've got the mix. Let's turn that up a bit. So the mix is the difference between my natural voice sound, as far as this recording is going, and the effect that's added to it. So if I turn that up, you're going to get a lot of effect that's happening. And I'm, my natural voice is sort of getting drowned out by the effect. So let's turn that down a bit. Okay. The colour, um, that's sort of changing the EQ in that one, so um, all the bright highness within my voice is sort of gone. If I turn that up, you may hear a little bit more of the brightest, the brighter sounds within my voice inflections. Okay, I'm going to turn that back a bit. And the size, if we play with that one, that's going to impact how much tail of the sound just keeps going, how long it goes for. Okay, so I just change that 
So you're hearing a lot of decay. So let's turn that down a bit while I'm talking. So if you wanted a lot of decay, you might be wanting to give the impression that you're in a, a tunnel, um, lots of metal, a lot of concrete or hard sorts of surfaces. That's the um, effect you might be wanting to get. You might want to get the effect that, um, or a natural effect within a space. Um, so if I back them off, it's nearly having a natural sound of the space I'm in. I'm in a room, I'm not outside, so I'm not going to have a lot of decay in this particular space. So when you play around with these things, think about the environment of the recording that you're trying to reproduce um, and how that's actually going to affect. If, it's, if you're adding these sorts of um, audio things to a video clip and the video clip looks nothing like how it's sounding, um, it can be quite annoying for the people watching and those sorts of things. So think about how your recording um, is going to be listened and what the um, intended purposes are for the sounds that you're after. Now all of these effects, you can use them on um, loop files over here so they can be applied on those as well just make sure you select the track that you wanted to do it if you've got the MIDI instruments you can apply it so these effects can be applied in many many different ways that pretty much brings us to the end of this um, if you have any questions with this or um, want any advice definitely comment in the comments below definitely uh, think about subscribing if you want to hear about any more videos I'm always keen to have any ideas there might be features that you want me to explore um, and talk about and yeah don't forget to hit the like button so you know um, also that I know that this is a popular video and popular type of video and the last thing would be definitely hit the notifications so that you know about when the next video might get uploaded thanks